We're now delighted to be joined over the telephone for more about this with Dr. Amra out of our tourism expert. Dr. Amra, good afternoon to you, sir. Good afternoon, ma'am. Thank you so much for joining us, doctor. Let me start by asking you, uh, and let's start with the most recent, you know, festival, uh, Alamein Festival, which is, of course, uh, a great success this year in the summer season and a very important uh, part of northern coast tourism uh, in Egypt. How do you see uh, such a festival this year, doctor? Well, uh, the activities of the Alamein Festival, as you know, were launched on Thursday, the July 13th, yes. until uh, August uh, the 26th, mm -hmm. and this is considered to be uh, the largest entertainment event in the Middle East. Yes. Opened its doors uh, to the visitors, and uh, the city received approximately a million uh, uh, um, tourists from the Arab countries and all over the world, mm -hmm. and also from inside Egypt. Yes. The Arab countries attend the, the, uh, the Arab countries at, to, uh, were invited to attend the activities of the festival. Yes, indeed. Now there were lots of uh, things that were going on: entertainment, uh, I mean, and uh, and uh, races, uh, sports events, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So this will be a step on Egypt being on the international map of the entertainment events and the conference uh, to tourism. Yes, indeed. Uh, could you tell me a bit more about Egypt's most, you know, attractive uh, festivals that have really attracted many tourists from all around the world, Doctor? Well, uh, there were lots of uh, festivals uh, that took place here. Of course, as we know, Egypt uh, has been blessed with the uh, good weather and with the location and the, and the infrastructure that, you know, that's important for holding the festivals. So... I will start with the Cairo International Book Fair and then El Gona Film Festival, uh, the Arab Horses Festival, and the Cairo International Film Festival, the Citadel International uh, Conference for Music and Singing, uh, the Festival of Drums and Heritage Art, uh, the Cairo Festival for Drama, mm -hmm. the Luxor Film Festival, the Aswan Film Festival, uh, lots of festivals, and it has been held in different cities of Egypt. Yes, indeed. Uh, Doctor, conference tourism is also a very important kind of new uh, cultural tourism, and hundreds of conferences has, have been held uh, in yes. Egypt, in many cities as well around the country. What are the possibilities in this uh, kind of tourism and the different venues and availability of all the different places to host uh, many international conferences uh, in Egypt? Oh, yes, of course. The, the uh, conference tourism is considered to be 15% mm. of the total tourism worldwide. Yes. So conference tourism in Egypt has been very lucky uh, recently, and lots of uh, uh, conferences have been held, I mean, hundreds, as you mentioned. Yes. So in, in different cities of Egypt, there were conferences held in Sharm el-Sheikh, conferences held in Aswan, in Luxor, in Hurghada, uh, El Gona, in El Alamein, and so on and so forth. So uh, I see a good opportunity and a chance for Egypt with conference tourism, especially yes. that uh, conference tourism is considered to be uh, part of the cultural tourism as well. And it's a good investment and, and good for the economy. And Egypt has been taking serious steps towards the conference tourism yes. uh, and, and lots of opportunities. And, 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 the, the, and lots you, of Egypt different... Has, Yes, and lots of different venues, some that are even, you know, not traditional conference venues. For example, the Cultural Tourism Marketing Committee in Lausor City announced that the first yes. quarter of this year saw over 82 conferences held in the city. And this is also an important, it's a catch-22. You can hold the conference as well as promote cultural tourism at the same time. You, yeah, absolutely. You're, you're absolutely right. And, and people in the conference tourism uh, it's a chance for them to travel yes. and see different cultures and different and get exposed to different cultures and different cities and different countries. Mm -hmm. So Egypt has been blessed with the weather all over the year. Yes. So uh, we are very much ready and, uh, and, and successful when it comes to conference tourism. Absolutely. Dr. Amr, um, let me ask you, you know, Egypt has worked very hard to diversify uh, its tourism over the last few years, no longer Absolutely. just sticking to cultural or beach. Uh, now there's so many different kinds of tourism to cater for so many different uh, populations and nationalities from all over the world. How do you see this move in really attracting uh, different kinds of tourists and increasing the number of tourists that come to the country? Uh, of course, I mean, Egypt uh, has been opening new markets. 
Mm. And uh, we don't talk only about cultural tourism as we used to see in the past. Yes. People come now to Egypt to see new Egypt. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not uh, the, the, the travelers' uh, parents' Egypt or grandparents' Egypt that we used to see in the past, but they come to see new Egypt now. Yes. And of course, the discoveries, we don't forget the discoveries that have been taking place in Egypt uh, in the last couple of years really helped uh, advertising Egypt and keeping Egypt on the news map all the time. Mm -hmm. So cultural tourism is part, and again, cultural tourism is also 15% of the total tourism. Beach tourism is like 70% of the world tourism. But Egypt now is going seriously towards the uh, conference tourism. And as you kindly mentioned, uh, Luxor only held 84 conferences uh, in, the, in the last, uh, I mean, uh, quarter of the year. So yes. that's a huge number. And that means that Egypt is ready for conferences or conference tourism and for conference meetings. And uh, this is a win-win situation because mm -hmm. travelers who, who travel on conference tourism, sometimes they don't have the time to go uh, to see the country, I mean, on holidays, but their chance is to uh, visit Egypt in, in the conference tourism. And I just met a doctor a couple of days ago. She told me it's not her first time to Egypt. Has been, she has been to Aswan. Mm -hmm. on a medical conference like uh, a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And she said that she spent uh, like a week there in Aswan and she enjoyed, enjoyed the city and she had a chance to take a cruise from, from Aswan to Luxor. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, it's a plus and uh, it opens new gates and ways for Egypt on tourism. Absolutely. Finally, Doctor, just before I leave you, let me ask you, you know, as the summer uh, season is wrapping up uh, more or less and we prepare for the upcoming uh, tourism season, what are your expectations, sir? Well, uh, my expectations are very high, mm -hmm. and uh, the coming season, inshallah, will be a great season. Uh, I mean, we're wrapping the summer, and the summer was successful when it came to tourism. The summer season was very successful, especially with the uh, new Alamein. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll have more chances uh, in the winter because uh, the bookings are, uh, are, are full. Uh, the, the, the hotels are fully booked for the coming season, and I hope uh, it's a fruitful season for Egypt and for everybody. Absolutely. Right. I'd like to thank you very, very much, Dr. Amr Atif, our tourism expert. Thank you so much, sir, for your time.